um, at the point of the first incarnation, um, the soul divides into two. That's right. Um, can they be born at different times? They will be born at different times. I mean, I mean, in different years. You know? In different years, yeah. Uh, and they could be born 20 or even 30 years apart. Yeah. Usually what happens after the first incarnation of the first half of the soul, the second half of the soul will hover, hover around due to the law of attraction of the two halves, waiting for incarnation opportunity, usually wherever the first one is at the time that it gets an opportunity to incarnate. So, and this is usual, but not always the case, by the way. But what will happen is that uh, for, for example, if you were born here in Australia and you never left Australia and you were the first half of the soul that incarnated, there's a high likelihood that your soulmate was born in Australia. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But if you were born, let's say you were born in Australia, but your parents then went to Italy and they stayed there for three years, right, and then they came home to Australia, then there's a whole possibility that your soulmate was born in Italy or Australia. Right. So, but the two halves of the soul, remember, will always be attracted to each other over time. And the way God made it is that even if your soulmate is born on the opposite side of the world, at some point you'll be drawn together. Right. Now, that can happen here on earth depending on your emotional condition. And if you don't work through your emotions about men or women, the opposite gender generally, then, um, and if, or if you're a gay soul and you don't work through both gender emotions, generally you will not attract your soulmate. But if you start working through emotions and allow yourself to work in your passions, then what will happen is that you will attract your soulmate. No matter what happens to them. If they're still alive. Uh, no, even in the spirit world, if your soulmate has passed, you will attract them as you're working through your emotions. Yeah. Can your soulmate be your brother or sister? Not, gen no, not generally. But at the beginning of human, uh, you know, birthing and so forth, back in the time of Mammon and the Man, that was the case. Uh, just a way for the mic. Back up. It's good if we can get this mic thing happening. I'm sorry. Hi, Jay. Um, is it guaranteed or highly likely that when you meet your soulmate that you'll know it's your soulmate? No. In fact, it's highly likely that you won't know. <laughs> so, um, now, can I clarify that? Yeah. The majority of you um, probably have already met your soulmates. Now, some of you will have a knowing that you think that might be such and such a person. Right? But um, many times our injuries prevent us from recognising the fact. So you could actually be walking down the street, walk straight past your soulmate, and if you've got some opposite gender injuries, let's say you're a female and a soulmate's male, you've got some opposite gender injuries, right? If you've got anger with men, but he hasn't got any feelings that he will put up with anger from women, you'll walk straight past him and not even feel attractive. But if you've worked through your anger with men and he doesn't have any feelings that men can, women can treat him badly and you put up with it, then it's likely you'll be more attractive. Can you see how your emotional injuries will impact upon the process of meeting your soulmate? That being said, you can develop yourself to the point where you've worked through all of your gender-based or many of your gender-based injuries, and it's highly likely then that when you meet your soulmate, you'll recognise them, whether they recognise you or not. Mm. There's a lot I want to say about soulmates in a complete discussion because it, it's uh, it's not it's not it's something that we have a tendency to romanticise, um, and it is a romantic relationship, but we have a tendency to romanticise it. And the problem with that is that we romanticise the actual development of the relationship as well. We think that a soulmate relationship will be a relationship without any troubles and without any trauma, and actually the opposite is normally the case. And the reason why is because you're actually often got opposite soul-based injuries, and if you have, then obviously you're going to have issues working with between each other. So if you have an attraction for someone over, say, 20 years, mm -hmm. could that be an indication that they're your soulmate? It could be an indication that they're your soulmate, but it could also be an indication that you haven't dealt with an emotion about the opposite gender for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> 